Let's suppose it's 10 o'clock in the morning, and let us suppose that God would come walking into your house, and he would sit down at the table, and he'd look you in the eye, and he would say, I want to interview you. And then he would say, I just want to ask you one question. And you'd say, what's the one question, God? And his question to you would be a familiar one because he asked it of his own disciples and he asked it of other people in the Bible. The question he would ask you is, where is your faith? And you would say to him, God, what do you mean by that? You're, you're omnipotent and you're omniscient. You know that I believe in you. And he would ask you again, where is your faith? And you say, what do you mean, God? And he would say to you, when you woke up this morning, what were you thinking about? And you would think back and you would say, well, I was thinking about the tests that I've got to take at the doctor's uh, next week. Or I was thinking about the surgery that is scheduled for July 17th. Uh, or I was thinking about something I did or said to somebody about a year ago, and I've never talked to them since because it was really, really a nasty situation. Uh, or I was thinking about this fear or this worry or this shame or this guilt, or I was thinking about, do I have to go to work today? I can't stand the boss that I have in my life. Uh, I, uh, do I have to go to work this morning or should I look for another job because I really don't think I'm competent for this situation? And God would look at you and he would say, you just said that you believed in me. I, I asked you, where is your faith? And you said, well, I believe in you, God. And then he would say, all of the things that you have mentioned indicates to me that you have very little faith in me. Do you remember he said to the disciples on one occasion, a storm on the sea, he said to them, where is your faith? The Israelites, they are escaping from Egypt and the Red Sea's in front of them and the chariots of Pharaoh are behind them. And Moses holds up his staff and the Red Sea opens and the people of Israel go walking through. Where was their faith? They really had no choice. If they had stayed where they were, they would have died. And here the waters have separated and they're walking through these waters and they don't have time to sit and think, is God going to hold the waters up or are they going to come crashing down on us? They had no choice. They had to go through the waters. It's about uh, 18 months later and it's time to go into the promised land. And they send 12 spies into the promised land and 10 of the spies come back and say, there's giants in the land who are like grasshoppers who are going to be destroyed. And two of the spies, Joshua and Caleb, they said, no, 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 no. There are giants in the land. We are grasshoppers, but we have God. And God can win this victory for us. The same Israelites who had gone through the Red Sea, the waters opening without any fear because they had no choice but to move, those same children of Israel 18 months later, now they have a choice. We can stay where we are and be safe, or we can go into the promised land and with God's help face the giants. And since they had a choice, they decided we are not going to go into the promised land. We will be destroyed. And because of that, God sends them into the wilderness for 40 years. So I ask you, where is your faith? Is it all wrapped up in something that's going to happen in the future related to your finances, your health, your relationships? Is it all tied up with something that's happened in the past that you can't quite get over? Or when God says, where is your faith? Could you say to him, hey, God, I'll tell you what. I woke up this morning and I meant it with all my heart when I said, this is a day that God has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. May this faith be the sunshine of your life. In our Savior's name, amen.